Hey everybody, welcome back to Wagered on Tilt. I am T, and today I wanted to talk about trying to do power rankings. And the way we're going to do this is not the typical way of doing power rankings. Now, it does still involve team scores, but these are going to be team scores that you predict and project with your own calculations. Now, typically, you'll take historical information and then load that up. Uh, find the delta between the home advantage through each individual game. Then you would square that and then find a uh, error amount and then try and reduce that using solver. And it's very similar to that. Now, if you don't know what I'm talking about, it'll be walked through in this video, so you don't need to worry about that. Um, but if you do know what I'm talking about, it's going to be very similar. But rather than using actual game scores, what we're going to do is try and figure out a linear regression and statistics that we think can predict scores, load that up, predict out the entire season. Now in this scenario, it's not all real data as far as this is the best data you can use. Um, I'm using very flat statistics just to try and show an example, but what we're going to do is try and predict the score and projection of games, then we're going to take our projections and then use that to try and predict power rankings. Now what we're really doing is trying to say that we think power rankings are impacted by these specific stats that we used in our linear regression. And that's all we're really doing here. So it's nothing new, it's not groundbreaking, it's not earth shattering stuff, very simplistic stuff. But it can help in trying to come up with other ways that you can try and find an edge on your own power rankings. So as previously mentioned, this is a method that I'm trying out to try and use statistics to create the power rankings versus just using the scores. Now, it's going to still use some scores, but it's ones that you predict and use based on statistics. So this model is going to be based around NBA information. Uh, again, you can fit this to any sport that you want. So first, I have a bunch of game data. Now in the game data, I have all the games, who played, uh, against who, and all these other statistics coming in here. So what I did was I looked through, found some stats that I thought might be useful, put them into a linear regression, and got the output. Now using that output, I'm going to try and predict scores for matchups. And then from those scores, we're going to build power rankings. Now let's head over to the power rank sheet. Now in the power rank sheet, again, I have all the games here listed. And I've gone ahead and carried over the things that I found that were kind of useful. So here you can see the R squared is uh, 0.76. That's pretty good. We have our intercept and then the values that actually had a decent return on impact on the overall outcome of the scores. So I went ahead and ran the linear regression, found that these worked pretty well for what we are testing with. This doesn't mean that these are the answers by any means, but this is in this case what worked out for it. The other thing that I needed to do was grab team stats. So this is for the full season. Again, maybe you wanna get more granular with this information and you don't wanna do a super high level one. That's what this model's using is super high level information. This is the teams per game information. Maybe you wanna base it on pace, so you use the possessions stats. So you could do it that way as well. This is per game though. So now that we go back in here, again, we have our games the stats, and then I have over here the linear regression output. So then it becomes much more of a standard model at this point for power rankings. So we'll come over here to the side. I just threw in home court advantage is worth four points for right now. I didn't look to evaluate it or calculate it out. I just threw four points in there. Um, you really want to think this through and kind of come up with a good number that you think might work or just use the standard numbers that you can find online. This number is going to change. So the other thing I did then was went ahead and grabbed the teams and their opponents. And for the scores, I went ahead and used the linear regression over here. So I'm going ahead and looking up the Atlanta Hawks, grabbing their field goals and putting it through the linear regression formula to calculate out what I think the score would be based upon the statistics over here. The DEPV, this is just a quick reference for me to be able to plug it into the formula easily um, without having to toggle between the two sheets. But you just build out that formula for both the away and the home team. So this way it's now fetching the home team rather than the away team, but it's still using the same information from the linear regression. 
Next, we need to get the home margin of victory. So that's pretty simple, right? You're just gonna go ahead and take the home score minus the away score. And here is, you can see, right, it's saying that the margin of victory was negative four in this scenario. Then I need a quick prediction. Now the quick prediction is gonna go ahead and take the home court advantage plus it's gonna go ahead and take the home team and grab their ranking minus the away team and grab their ranking. And then that's gonna give us that score. That prediction score is gonna be negative two. And then we have the squared error. So then what we're gonna do is we need to find what is the delta in our calculations and in our prediction. So we're gonna go ahead and take the home margin of victory minus the prediction and then square it. The reason you wanna square it is because we're gonna be adding all these numbers up. So if you don't square the number, you could have a negative in there and it'll offset the calculation and it's not gonna work out well. So you just wanna go ahead and square it. That gets rid of the negative and we'll be fine moving forward. So you're gonna copy these formulas all the way down for all the games. And again, here, you know, I have all of those games in here and you can see the scores changing. And if you see these being static, that's just because this is the same exact team and their numbers aren't changing because of the linear regression formula is pointing to the same statistics. So let's bounce back to the top. Now let's come over a little bit further. And right here we have the summed squared error. So what this is gonna do is just go ahead and sum this entire column up. And that's all we need to do for this point right here is just go ahead and sum all those numbers together. All right, so now what we're gonna wanna do is go ahead and run the solver. So again, here I have the home court advantage set to four. I have the team rankings set to just one across the board. Here in column U, it is gonna try and rank the order in which this number actually falls. That way we can actually sort by this later. Now this has already been run a few times while I was testing this for the recording. So these are gonna end up being already sorted in the proper order. Um, so we don't need to worry about that. So what we're gonna do is come over to data analysis. Right below there you have solver, click solver. Now when this opens, you're gonna set the objective to wherever your SSE is, right? So right here it's AD2 and we're gonna try and minimize that, right? So we're gonna try and figure out how can we minimize the error. The next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna be changing the variables through here, which are gonna be their rankings. And we're then also going to go ahead and change their home court advantage number, see what works best for this kind of a scenario. Now, again, this is uh, kind of following a very basic and generic way to try and do kind of rankings. This is not the be all end all and that there's other methodologies that you can do. But again, this is a quick synopsis of ways that you can do this. So then you'll go ahead and solve. It's gonna process for a few seconds and then it's gonna go ahead and spit out the number. And once it's done, it's gonna just ask you, do you wanna keep the solution? You'll hit okay. And then it's gonna show these modified rankings. And again, here I have one, two, three, four, blah, 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 all the way down. And then you also have the home court advantage. So based upon the way we kind of quickly built this, it's gonna say that there's almost no home court advantage because again, this is to the scientific E to the negative zero six. So there's gonna say there's pretty much no home court advantage with the way that we built this. That's not necessarily true um, because if you change your stats and things like that and how you build the regression that was predicting these outcomes and scores, things will change. So again, this is just mock data that I quickly threw together. This is not legitimate information that you can use in your actual model. This is just an example of how this could work. So for the power rankings, again, they didn't look that great when they came out, but again, it's really kind of based on the data that you use. Based on my stats that I use, they were very flat stats. They were from one season, not multiple seasons. Um, I didn't kind of blend any numbers. Uh, the linear regression was very generic. So things like that. I didn't account for any defense in these games. So those are things that you wanna try and account for when you're building this kind of a thing out where you're gonna use statistics project out all of these scores, then pass them into the methodologies of a standard power ranking, and then use that information to go ahead and try and create some predictions. Now using that, you can try and calculate spreads and things like that. So the numbers that you see in this video, please do not use these. These were just quickly grabbed off the internet from basketball reference. I threw them in, it was for only one season. 
I didn't really think too much on what the linear regression was going to be. I just chose some stats arbitrarily that I thought might be useful, uh, but it doesn't really mean anything. If you have any questions or comments about the video, please go ahead and let me know. Um, I always want to try and improve things. If you have anything you want to learn or that you were confused on, drop a comment and I'll try and help you out as best I can. If you found this video helpful, informative, or just interesting, uh, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. That way it helps the YouTube algorithm and tries to push this kind of content up and then that way other sports bettors can try and find this information and learn and grow. If you have any questions on this or any of the other videos I've done before, uh, you can reach me on Twitter at wageredontilt. You can also reach me on Discord in the Unabated Discord. I'm the T in the Unabated Discord. Uh, if you want to get my attention quickly, you can drop a comment in the articles channel that they have. Otherwise, I'm constantly just looking for anybody that mentions me in a comment, and I'll try and answer anything I can there. So again, this was trying to lay the groundwork for ideas on what you could do to try and implement your own power ranking system using statistics that you think will inform scores, then take those informed scores and then use them in a power ranking system, which then you can in turn use to try and predict a spread. So until next time, happy wagering.